Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Double A Entertainment. I really enjoyed doing this channel and if there's one thing I really enjoyed learning was learning about all of these films that came out the year I was born. And maybe that seems a little bit self-centered but I don't care, I had a lot of fun finding out this stuff. So for today, here are my top 10 personal favorite films that came out the year I was born 1999. At number 10, The Green Mile. Based on the amazing novel, which was originally published in six installments by my absolute favorite writer of all time, Stephen King, The Green Mile opens up with an elderly retired prison guard who tells of his experiences working on death row, aka The Green Mile, including the gruesome details of the electric chair. One day, a larger-than-life African-American gentle giant by the name of John Coffey is brought in after he is wrongfully convicted of raping and murdering two young girls. It is revealed one day when John Coffey cures the guard, played by Tom Hanks, of his blood infection that he has godlike healing powers. With these powers, he can also reveal people's sins. The Green Mile is an incredibly down-to-earth story which simultaneously reveals the goodness in people and also the cruelty of man and doesn't shy away from the absolute brutality of the electric chair, including an incredibly disturbing scene involving a botched execution. I would like to give a special shout out to Sam Rockwell who puts on an extremely convincing portrayal of the disgusting and insane Wild Bill. And if you haven't already, I highly recommend you go read the book. At number 9. Fight Club. Directed by David Fincher and based on the novel by one of my favorite writers, Chuck Palahniuk, Fight Club was one of many 1999 movies revolving around the monotonous everyday life of having an office job. Our main character, the unnamed narrator, played by Edward Norton, suffers from insomnia and is struggling with finding his purpose in life as well as with his masculinity. He gets help by pretending to have cancer and other mental and physical ailments so he can crash in on group therapy sessions and one night he finds a girlfriend, I think, named Marla Singer played by the incredibly hot Helena Bonham Carter. Later he comes to meet the rebellious and crazy Tyler Durden played by Brad Pitt and after the narrator's apartment catches fire, the two build an underground fight club which swiftly becomes a terrorist organization. This movie is an absolute masterpiece, and the score is fucking amazing, and it has my favorite song from Tom Waits. At number 8, The Seder House Rules. Based on the novel by John Irving, the main character is Homer Wells, portrayed marvelously by Toby Pizza Time McGuire, an orphan who was adopted on a couple of occasions only to end up back at the orphanage. Growing up without any parents, he was trained by Dr. Wilbur Lodge, played by Michael Caine, to become a gynecologist and obstetrician. I first watched a set of house rules when I was 10 and remember enjoying it. Then I rewatched it at the age of 22 and really enjoyed it. I'm actually pretty shocked the film got a PG-13 despite the subject matter of rape, incest, sexual freedom, and abortions. But I must say, the filmmakers really handled it in a properly restrained and sensitive light. The topics of being an outcast and finding a family are the main focus and really got to me. The setting and music are what stuck with me the most, and I love the recurring imagery from the film King Kong, which is one of the main films that really got me into film as a whole. At number 7, American Beauty. Yeah, this movie aged like milk left out in the sun. Having won Best Picture for 1999, American Beauty stars Kevin Spacey as a middle-aged and hapless suburban office worker. His daughter doesn't seem to fit in anywhere and his wife, played by Annette Bening, is struggling with a job as a real estate agent and struggles severely with self-esteem. The daughter, played by Thora Birch, soon finds a soulmate and the voyeuristic boy next door who also struggles to fit in anywhere due to his upbringing by his abusive marine father sent him to a psychiatric hospital. Also, while his wife is having an affair on the side, Kevin Spacey's character is having sexual fantasies about his high school daughter's high school friend. Minus that part, I absolutely love this movie due to its brutal exploration of the lives of everyday people, showing us that there is no such thing as normal. Hence the title American Beauty, which is the name of a rose that rots from the stem but can seem perfectly fine upon first appearances. At number 6, Existence. Directed by the body horror maestro David Cronenberg, Existence refers to the title of a virtual reality gaming system. When the video game designer Allegra Geller is rescued by security guard Ted Peichel, played by Jude Law, after an assassination attempt, the two go on the run as a price has been placed on Allegra's very life. After a portrayal has been installed into the spine of Ted Peichel, the two go into the world of Existence in hopes of fixing a virus which has been introduced into the system. Existence is one of many films from 1999 to tackle the subject of virtual reality, and it honestly is the most accurate depiction of things to come within the next 5 or 10 years. 
Also, the designs of the gaming pods and the organic guns are kick-ass. At number 5, The Blair Witch Project. One of the single most terrifying horror films ever made grossed an enormous amount of money due to its low budget and brilliant ad campaign. Still in the early stages of the internet, a website for the film was made detailing the supposed real-life disappearances of documentary filmmaker Heather Donahue and her two friends Josh and Mike, adding to the legend that the film is real-life footage documenting the final days of the trio. What starts off as a somewhat innocent student film project Heather and her two friends head out to make a documentary about the legend of the Blair Witch. Things start off somewhat smoothly until, the until they venture out into the woods and get lost. Running out of food and other essential resources, the group begin to suspect they are being chased by someone or something. The Blair Witch Project makes for an absolutely terrifying watch and I really wish I could see it with an audience thinking it was real. At number 4, Sleepy Hollow. So it's no secret that I am a massive Tim Burton fan and this, alongside Ed Wood, are my two favorite films of his, as well as of all time. Just a couple of weeks ago during Halloween, I had the day off and my buddy suggested we rewatch this movie and he said he never saw me so happy. Starring Johnny Depp as a progressive thinking and science obsessed and, ain't gonna lie, attractive Ichabod Crane as a New York based detective during the late 1700s, he is sent to investigate a series of gruesome murders in the town of Sleepy Hollow, all of which are suspected to have something to do with the supernatural. Also, all of the victims are found headless. Sleepy Hollow is incredibly beautiful darkly satirical, and chock full of gore. Although the film does take inspiration from Hammer films and German Expressionism, it seems to go in a whole new direction entirely creating a ghostly world of fantasy and the macabre. At number 3, Ravenous. Remember Quentin Tarantino's rant about how Top Gun is the greatest screenplay ever written? I can make the exact same argument for this underrated gem. During the Mexican-American Civil War, Captain John Boyd, played by Guy Pearce, is sent to a remote military outpost where outcasts as punishment for cowardice on the battlefield. On a dark and snowy night, a stranger, played by Robert Carlyle, comes to the base after wandering aimlessly for an indeterminate period of time, and after being questioned, he confesses to having resorted to cannibalism for survival. In hopes of finding survivors, the group embark on a journey to the cave, but things get really uncomfortable when the stranger, Colonel Ives, still shows cannibalistic desires and is really, really hungry. And that's just the beginning. The film brilliantly uses the theme of cannibalism to touch on themes of addiction, manifest destination, war, and even homosexuality. It was also directed by a woman, Antonia Bird, and that's always a plus in my book. At number two, The Ninth Gate. Directed by Roman Polanski and starring the super amazing Johnny Depp in his prime as an antique book dealer Dean Corso, Corso was hired by his top and incredibly wealthy client Boris Balkan, played amazingly by former Dracula Frank Langella, to investigate the authenticity of his copy of The Nine Gates of the Kingdom of Shadows, a notorious occult book written by Satan himself. There are only three copies in existence, which leads to an international investigation leading the naive Corso to Portugal and Paris. The catch being that all three books are sought after by Satanists and anyone who gets in the way will be murdered. I love books and love collecting antique books and although I'm not much of a fan of supernatural thrillers, I love the way the film treats the subject matter in a realistic light and adds to the tension from start to finish. The Ninth Gate is easily in my top 15 favorite films of all time and between the playful edge combined with threats of murder and the possibility of supernatural threats makes for an intense yet enjoyable watch. For today, we aren't getting one, but two honorable mentions. For our first honorable mention, 8mm. After having directed the notorious Bat Nipples and Robin in 1997 featuring a Bat credit card, Joel Schumacher made a sharp turn away from the camp and child friendly world of Batman and Robin and hit us with the incredibly bleak 8mm. To be perfectly honest, Although the film does seem to be a bit dry, the very concept of snuff cinema is almost never talked about and the very idea is absolutely terrifying. Nicolas Cage stars as a private investigator who is sent to the home of a recently widowed yet wealthy client who has come across a film reel featuring the brutal rape and murder of a young girl, what she suspects is real. With the help of a pornographic store owner, played by Joaquin Phoenix, the two investigate the underground film circuit of illegal pornography and snuff. The film is extremely bleak, tackles the incredibly terrifying and taboo subject of snuff, and holds no bars. 
Also, it features James Gandolfini. And of course, for our second honorable mention, The Mummy. I can really sum this one up quickly. It's the best Universal Mummy movie since the OG Boris Karloff one. And just look at these sets, and more importantly, the mummies. I really want to go on the ride in Orlando before it gets torn down and becomes a Harry Potter prostate massage parlor. At number one, Eyes Wide Shut. Not only was this the final film directed by my personal idol, Stanley Kubrick, but it was released exactly six days after my birthday on July 16th, my birthday being July 10th. Even though whenever people ask me what my favorite Kubrick film is, I deny having a favorite because his films are so drastically different from one another, but this is definitely a close contender because it is, at least in my opinion, his most occult and mysterious dreamlike film. The novel the film is based on, Trom Novel, literally translates to dream novel and Eyes Wide Shut truly has a hypnotic dreamlike quality. Tom Cruise stars as a doctor who is struggling with the thought that his wife, played by Nicole Kidman, had an affair with a Navy officer. Over the course of one night, Tom Cruise's character embarks on an odyssey which eventually leads him to go undercover in a secret society where, well, people anonymously hook up, leading to the film's ultimate climax. And yes, that pun was intended. Even though Stanley Kubrick hit the ball out of the park with every single movie he made, most directors tend to dry up in the latter stages of their careers, but with his final film, Stanley Kubrick gave us something incredibly strange, surreal, terrifying, mysterious, and incredibly hypnotic.